a couple of um a couple I, I think I might recognize yeah, a couple this... of those players. It seems like we've got a, a fairly powerhouse matchup going on here. Yeah, we're gonna be featuring table number nine. Both these players are two and O. Oh. You might recognize Daichi Shimada as the uh the runner up Daichi. at the World Championships and turn up playing up against Natalie Miller, a fantastic player oh, from Australia, good. also at two and oh. Gonna be on the Lugia this time, and uh Daichi is gonna be throwing some control our way. Yeah, Daichi's gonna be making us work for it this round, but Natalie's actually prized. Two of those tech attackers, we've got the Radiant Charizard and we've got the Amazing Rare Evil Tail there. Both of those are actually in the prizes and we know they're played as one of. so Natalie's going to be down a couple of options in this game. And I, I kind of like this. Last time Daichi was on stream, I was, I was casting it at a world final. And now Daichi's back on stream and I'm back, so you know, <laughs> we're back together, that yeah. makes me happy. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> <laughs> very cool for both of you, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Daichi gonna go a little slower this time and uh, just have that Pokemon down, that Evitol there, and pass the turn away. And uh, this is gonna be a fun matchup, as we've seen uh, time and time again, the Control versus the Lugia. It's been featured on the regional stage a few times. And you definitely need to watch out for the energy count there from Natalie, either going very oh. aggressive or finding a, the right time that's to good. use these energies on Aluminium. Absolutely, that's going to be the big thing, watching those energies, seeing those resources. And actually, you can see right now, Natalie's gone, oh, I'm playing against Control. The incident the Evil Tower massively gives away. It's a Control deck. So Natalie there, she's looking and she's counting up all of that energy. Which energy have I got? How many of them are prized? Trying to make sure that she's got all those options later in the game. Of course, she started Manaphy, which it's, I mean, maybe if, if that Radiant Greninja attacks, that Manaphy will be quite relevant. But we see the Evolution Incense coming down, notes being taken. And for Natalie here, she's going to have to go for quite a, a reserved game plan. It's not always necessarily going to be the, the big fast turbo we see from Lugia. It's, I need to set up but I need to set up without wasting a single resource at any point here because th this is going to be um, this is going to be kind of important. Yeah, absolutely. This can be very tricky. You know that your opponent is going to be playing those Galar Mine. It's such a, a, a fun inclusion with the, that Stadium card to get the additional um, retreat cost there onto your opponent's Pokemon. And starting a Pokemon like that Manaphy could be an issue just because you're, that's not a Pokemon that really you could uh, use as an attacker at any point. Sure, maybe you could <laughs> sprinkle in 20 damage here and there. But uh, having to continually retreat this Pokemon, especially if your opponent makes use of cards like Boss's Orders, you could see a lot of those energies falling by the wayside. Absolutely, and that is not something you want to see happening. So I'm having a quick look at Daichi's list here, and we're seeing the usual kind of things. A couple of different Snorlax. You've got the Block Face Ice Q. We've got that Reggie Lecky. You've got the Mill Tank. Uh, we, we've got the Elder Gods. A lot of things we would expect to see in these control decks. Natalie's deck, it, it looks like the kind of standard Lugia list we're seeing at the moment. You've got your Stoutland V. You've got your Radiant Charizard. You've got your Amazing Rare Evil Tau. You know, it's a lot of what we would expect. There is a Dunsparce in there as well, which is probably not that relevant this matchup, honestly. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair, fair enough here. <laughs> uh, we are going to see Natalie just go ahead and get that Snorlax down. This can be a, uh, a strong attacker uh, in the matchup. If you want to just uh, make use of a Pokemon that doesn't need to move around too many energies to get the job done here, and uh, we shall see if that is the choice here, just promoting the Snorlax. Yeah, promoting it, passing over, and then Daichi's going to be up. And now the question is, what's Daichi got here? I mean, Daichi's not looking for a huge amount of setup. There's all these control decks tend to do. It is about just having answers down to what your opponent does and making sure you can stop. But we do see a very interesting card coming out nice and early from Daichi here. It is, um, it's not a card we see in a lot of decks. It's actually the Sydney coming down. Yeah, you know, sprinkle that in, and uh, it's a great way <laughs> to get some disruption and some information, as Daichi has already removed the cards from hand. But can I take a look at the rest of that? I want to see what I'm up against for the, for the rest of this game, uh, if, if you aren't able to get a new hand. Oh, and the Yellhorn confusing both active Pokemon, but in a deck where you're not attacking as much as your opponent, that is way more annoying for them. Then we see the Manaphy coming down to protect the bench. And like I say, Daichi didn't do much that turn. A little bit so of disruption solid. and information gathering with Sydney. Bit of confusion with the Yellhorn passing over to Natalie. Yep, and uh, this, this is awkward <laughs> as the Snorlax was not meant to be confused. It wanted to go to sleep and uh, take some knockouts on the way. And uh, now we're going to see what the plan is here. Is these, are, uh, these Lukia lists are not always focusing on having those switching effects here. 
No, you said the Berg Keeper South, not much. We do see, we actually see the V-Star coming down just for a single Archeops here. Not really what you're looking for, you're looking to go for double Archeops. And we do get a couple of energy, looks like a double turbo and a capture energy. Is that capture energy? Yeah, it's capture yep. energy. Going on to the Snorlax. So Natalie, oh, we're flipping. Oh, we're flipping. It's oh, a Tails! No! 30 damage and the attack fails. That is not what you're looking for. And Daichi's already like, well, I forced an attack and it was a confusion and it went. And this is, um, yeah, not ideal. And we actually see Chorus's experiment coming down here. Three, five cards, three go into your hand, two go into the Lost Zone. Yeah, this has been a fun inclusion in the deck just as a way to see more cards. And honestly, a lot of these cards you're never going to try to use again from the discard pile. Sure, there's some recovery options that we've seen. Some players focused on that Silene and kind of trying to continue a loop. But... Uh, just throwing away some of these cards with the Lost Zone. I don't, I don't need these for this matchup. No, I kind of like it. It's, it's an interesting way to kind of fill your deck a little bit. But it's, also, it's an aggressive supporter. It lets you see a lot of cards nice and quickly. But it doesn't make you discard your hand like something like Professor's Research would. And we do see a draw there with Greninja. You discard an energy from your hand. You draw a couple of cards. And Daiji could be here a long really... Game. Well, you're in prevent mode here. You're just trying to say to your opponent, I hope you don't have much. Cape. We do see the giant cape, excuse me, the cape of toughness coming down, adding a, an extra 50 HP to that basic Pokemon there. And this is everything Daiji wants at the moment, really. Yep. Confusion, nice beefy basic. Your move, Natalie, what can you do? And this is cute because you see the double turbo energy on the Snorlax. That is actually going to be enough hit points to, to keep this Radiant Grinch around for a while. Oh, another flip, and it is a heads this time. So we do see the KO on the Evil Tal with the Snorlax. So let's at least get something here. Oh, and did that actually wake up? Oh, wow. That was amazing. Double, you, the Snorlax course when it falls asleep, you have to flip double heads to wake up. But Natalie did flip double heads, and the sleep overrode the confusion, and then Snorlax woke up. That's right. It's uh, it spun all the way around, but it's <laughs> found its way back uh, into the uh, general active position there, and it takes a nice knockout on a Pokemon that's terrifying. You uh, love to remove that Evitol from play, as that is going to be the main way that Daichi finds a victory, removing energies and leaving Natalie with nothing else. Yeah, against a deck like Lugo, which is so reliant on those special energies, that Evil Tail getting rid of freedom is huge. And oh, wait, it's a Yellhorn. It's back. <laughs> We've got another another double confusion. But you'll notice Daichi hasn't attacked yet this game. It's not really what he's going for, if I'm honest with you. We see a Snorlax hit in the field. It is the same Snorlax, different artwork, but the same Snorlax. And it does look like we've got to capture energy. And oh, look, it, it seems like there is a particular Pokemon we're looking for here. Yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, if uh, we're looking to continue to recover some cards here or if it's uh, the plan is to remove these energies. As th there are some uh, some strategies here. You can either just go aggressive with that Evitol or maybe you work in that Reggie Alecky and you continue to find these Yellhorns and just leave your opponent stuck, uh, confused as much as possible. Yeah, that could be kind of fun, of course, if Natalie gets a, a attack off with the Snorlax. The Snorlax then goes to sleep and probably doesn't wake up. Now... Evil Tail coming off the capture energy. Love this coming down. We've already seen the energy attachment for the turn. So the Evil Tail's not attacking this turn. So that does give Natalie another chance to potentially gust and KO. Although Lugia's not known for its gusting. Yeah, and uh, there are some ways, of course. Usually it's just the two bosses orders, but we see three in this list. And maybe that's just a nod to understanding how great that card is. And you can't always focus on the Serena. Oh, there we go. And it's not the Evil Tail. It's the Snorlax. Natalie does not want Daichi having a decent attacker coming up. So it looks like we're going to have some Snorlax on Snorlax attacking here. Oh, no, maybe not. Because we see the energy going from Archeops onto Lugia. Maybe Snorlax is done for a minute. Yeah, I mean, Snorlax has definitely done its job. And it's, it's a great way to avoid the issue of the Yellhorn. As, of course, we've seen it already. If you can put yourself to sleep finally, you can work your way around it. We've seen two of the Yellhorns already. And now we're at an interesting standpoint where uh, we can either see the flipping continue or the Lugia go in. Looks like another flip. And it's and a head. Huge. And then we see the double flip for sleep. Oh, only the one head. So the Snorlax does stay asleep. But at least if you fail to sleep, you know, sleep, you get to do it between turns and or in Pokemon checkup. And of course, you don't take damage for failing a sleep flip like you would for failing a confusion flip. Absolutely. Oh, but here comes the Evil Tal. <laughs> yep. There's uh, there's definitely a few ways to play this. We're going to see the, uh, the the pressure on the energy cards at this point now, especially if 
we can find the energy. And it looks like maybe that's one of the pieces missing as yeah. Daichi's going to go ahead and throw those away with Radiant Greninja. Did he draw it? Yes, he did. He got the double turbo. That's absolutely huge. That is what you needed. And we got a second Evil Tail coming down as well because there's a lot of energy on the board. One Evil Tail's not going to do it here. But getting that off of the Greninja was huge. And we see the energy coming off from the Lugia. And now Snorlax is still there, but Snorlax is asleep. And one head, but a no oh, way! It double heads. <laughs> That's two out of three double heads. Wow! Yeah, it is. It is not going away anytime soon. And uh, it looked like Daichi actually did have the second energy there, but not anymore. Marnie is coming down, and Natalie is going to go ahead and get five extra cards here to try to keep this rolling. Snorlax definitely primed and ready to take an additional knockout. Oh, and that was absolutely huge because now the Snorlax can just carry that evil towel, and Daichi needs another double turbo energy. And and Natalie is just whittling away these prizes, which is what you need to do against Control. You're just whittling away. So we do see the attack. We do see... Oh. And another... No How? How do you get three out of four double heads? <laughs> uh, Natalie just uh, throws her hands up. Says, oh, Exciting. I guess I'll take it. This is working out pretty well. Snorlax is not feeling sleepy today. Snorlax is definitely jet lagged. Oh, well, uh, that's, uh, that's one good thing about traveling to Australia, I'm sure. <laughs> But Snorlax didn't even travel! That's true, yeah, Nat Natalie had a, had a short trip, I suppose. <laughs> oh, either way, that Snorlax absolutely putting in work. Like, basically, Natalie's done nothing but just put some energy on Snorlax and attack, and it's absolutely working. So we do see Daichi there with the Reggie Eleki, probably going to go for the Electromagnetic Sonar, just get a trainer card back from the discard pile. Problem is, Natalie, oh, we do see the Cape of Toughness, but the problem here is Natalie's already taken three prizes. Daichi needs to start whittling down a little bit faster. Yeah, and Daichi's trying to do that. As uh, you see once more another Pokemon that can attack that Miltank being played down, something to remove this Snorlax from play so the general strategy can get back into action, which is to use this Yellhorn, stick it to something like that Lugia, watch the flips happen, and remove all the energies. And if that happens, you're in a great spot, but Daichi just continues to lose all of their Pokemon, and if Natalie has another boss, this is terrifying. And you've got to think, right? If you're Daichi, you do not expect your opponent Snorlax to hit double heads three out of four times on sleep. No oh way. my goodness! <laughs> four out of five times! You've got to be kidding. You see, kind of almost an apology there from Natalie. Like, like I, I promise you, I'm just flipping these dice. But this is, or rolling these dice, this is just the way it's going. And I hate to say it, but I think this is one of those games where it's and yeah, and Daichi seems to be thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Concedes game one, and Natalie does take a one game to zero lead. Unbelievable. That was such a great way to close out against Control. And this is exactly where you want to see a Control player if you're Natalie. An early win uh, uh, against your opponent, and sure enough, you've got a good potential for a nice long game here. And uh, the strategy's definitely lined up. That Snorlax avoiding the confusion is doing a lot of work. It really is. Although I've got to say, right, that was a great, great win from Natalie. Did everything she needed to do. One with a Snorlax. And I'm sorry, whenever I see a card, I said I want to see something weird. You found Seeing it. Seeing what is essentially <laughs> a straight Snorlax deck was kind of awesome. But we've got to say, flipping the double heads on that sleep, what should have happened more in that game is that that Snorlax should have stayed asleep and Natalie was struggling to find an attacker and Daichi was given a bit more time to set up those Evil Tail and get rid of those energy. So, you know, taking nothing away from Natalie's play, which was fantastic. She played that game wonderfully. The flips went her way. And if I'm Daichi here, I'm thinking, look, that, that was a bad game. But there is no way my opponent is going to flip that many heads on Snorlax sleep in the future. So I don't think Daichi really needs to be worried about this, except for the time, which I think you pointed out well. Control wants to win a long game one, and maybe game two finishes, maybe it doesn't. They don't want to lose game one. Yeah, and uh, Daichi, of course, has the opportunity to draw prize cards. Uh, there's that Miltank. There is that Snorlax of his own that he could use to, to start to do work, but you need to remove energies from your opponent. So it's going to take a little while. Let's see if any cards are prized that are important. We see one of those Cape of Toughness along with that Regieleki uh, and the Snorlax, too. So that, that could be awkward. Yeah, it's not ideal. Not the worst prize I've ever seen, but it's, it's, always, it's something awkward. You never really like to see it. But it does seem like we are off here. We've got a mill tank in the active and against a Dunsparce, which is not a great starter for Natalie. That's really just going to be taking up a bench space that really isn't needed. And Daichi here is just kind of off. We've got ourselves a, a Raiding Greninja on the bench. Of course, we saw all the drawing from that last game, which was absolutely huge. So, you know, if I'm Daichi here, I'm just 
kind of setting up like last game and feeling good. Yep, this is the Pokemon that you want to be playing against. Very similar to that Manaphy last time. Just a good Pokemon that you might be able to stick into the active spot and start to work your game plan. But you're usually looking to find a couple turns here. Radiant Greninja are going to do a great job of making use of these 14 energies in the control deck to try to draw 14. through and see a lot of options. Wash, yeah, that is a lot of energy in the control deck. It's, um, but, you know, there's Twins, a lot of different options in it. You've got to have those double and turbo energy to try and use your evil tile. And, okay. You know, you've got things like your capture energy, getting out your basics. And obviously, if you're using Radiant Greninja as a bit of a draw engine, the more energy you've got, the better. The thing is that Miltank's not going to do great if, if Snorlax comes out again. Miltank can hang against Snorlax. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a, a tricky spot. We'll see if we can find some other Pokemon here, and it's going to be the uh, Snorlax, the Gormandize uh, over here to draw some additional cards, and th that is exactly what you want to see as a control player. Just try uh, continually refresh the hand, play as many cards down as you can, and you know you're never going to deck out. No, you've got ways like Eldegoss to make sure that you literally will not deck out. You won't lose a game by deck out. So we do see a double turbo being used to retreat the mill tank, and then we see the Gormandize. Let's just draw to you've got seven cards in your hand. Yep. This is, uh, I'd like to also just take a, a moment to look at Natalie's deck list. As we mentioned earlier, of course, the Snorlax is so important here. That's uh, one of the big features that we've been talking about uh, as the Lugia player is, do you want to play that Raikou, which has some use in the mirror match, or do you play this interesting card like that Snorlax? I don't know if this match is going to be as nearly favored as it looked if we saw a card like Raikou featured instead of this Snorlax. No, no, I would be on that one. So we do see the uh, Zeta Dunsparce gets a capture energy. Capture energy goes and gets a Lugia. Because Natalie still needs to do her thing here, right? She still needs to get the Lugia V-Star. Still needs to use that to get the Archeops to accelerate the energy to get all of these, you know, different attackers up and rolling. But you need to try and make sure, you know, like we saw with the last game, you've got something like the Snorlax that can sit there and just, you know, take a few hits, you know, so deal a few hits, maybe take a few hits as well, okay. and just kind of work through it in that regard. That's really what you're looking that for. Australian so. connection. We'll see a connection from down under. Uh, a, a strategy that can be uh, used early on here. Of course, you still need to work in the general strategy, work in that Lugia V-Star, get the Summoning Star, get those Archeops, at least one, and then you can start playing some Pokemon. This is going to be a slower setup here. Just Lugia V and uh, a little bit of an awkward hand to start things off. Yeah, we saw in the mirror match, you don't really want a Lugia V active to end the turn. Of course, in this matchup, you're not really looking to lose it. But we do see that Daiji here is working on something, well, kind of like last game, but a little bit faster. We've got two Evil Tower down, one's got an energy, only a single energy, but that can be doubled up next turn. And what we basically got here is Daiji going, you know what? I'd quite like to be able to stream Cry of Destruction this game. Yep. Oh, and it looks like oh. a bunch of orders on Dunsparce. And a Gallimide to try and trap it in the active. That's quite big. Yeah, and uh, Natalie was setting up to maybe read the wind, draw more cards, and get something going here early on. And that is not an option anymore. Dunsparce stuck in the active spot with that Gallimide. But we got a peek at the hand. Natalie actually holding on to the Bird Keeper. We'll oh, nice. see if that's going to be an option early on here. We do see the evolution in sense. Problem is, though, with Gallimide out, you know, Daichi's deck is made to gust time after time after time. And Daichi's going to have more gusting than Natalie's going to have Bird Keeper. So it's not just about using it, but it's about the time to use it. It's so awkward. But we do see the Evolution Incense coming down, grabbing that Archeops. And it looks like we've got to capture energy onto the Dunsparce. And there is at least a Quick Ball in hand. So if Natalie wants to get that Archeops in the discard, it can hit the discard. And it does. Yep, we will. And this is one of the few matchups where you can just go with that single Archeops. Feel comfortable as you don't need to accelerate too many energy cards here. And of course, if you're playing against Gormandize Snorlax, the best thing that you can do is use Marnie in combination with a KO. And we'll see if that's on the table for Natalie. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Put your opponent down to a four card hand while taking away their option to draw extra cards. It's kind of mean, but you know, have to be a little bit mean to win Pokemon sometimes. You have to kind of frustrate your opponent. That's, you know, that's how we win. But does look like the Marnie is going to come down here. Natalie's going to get five cards. Daichi's going to get four. And then the question is, is there a way we can combine this with a KO? Oh, I think I see three Professor's Research in the hand. Maybe Who's in hand? And an Ultra Ball as well in, oh, in Natalie's hand. This that's is terrible. Not ideal. So we don't see the Lugia V-Star. We don't see the Archeops coming out. We don't see a KO. And now, of course, Daichi can just Gormandize to fill his hand back up again while he continues trying to set up those Evil Tau, gets more energy on the board. 
You've got to imagine we're going to see an energy play somewhere here. Could be on the mill tank as an attacker. Could be on an evil tau. So you've got kind of that energy spread out for multiple attackers. Or it could just be setting up one big attacker here. And yeah, I kind of like this. And then the Gorman dies again. That went pretty well for Daichi. Yep, just go ahead and put yourself in the exact same position as last turn. But with Evil Tower ready to go. Yes, and that is that is a great spot. Of course, also doing it with the capture energies means that more of those double turbos uh, and twin energies are going to be available later on. And that's something that we've seen control players really struggle with against Lugia, is when your opponent uses that Marnie, maybe it is tough to find that double turbo at the right time and continue to chain together the Cry of Destruction. Yeah, the more of those double energies you've got left in your deck in the late game, the easier it's going to be to find them. Being able to, you know, get going without using them in the early game, like you say, absolute huge. So Natalie here, we're, and you know, she's basically working on the same kind of thing again. We do see the Professor's Research finally coming down here, and that's going to draw her a new hand of seven cards. And hopefully here, we're going to see a Lugia V-Star, we're going to see an Archeops hit the board, and we're going to start seeing some attacking, because by this point in the last game, Natalie was having a much better time Tram attacking. That Snorlax was already taking Fire. prizes. But we do see the V-Star coming down at last. Yeah, and because of the slower pace that Natalie chose to go with here, not using that Bird Keeper and going aggressive, there's this opportunity to get two Archeops down here with the Lugia's V-Stars summoning Star, and that means that you're going to have an opportunity to accelerate many energies here. So not only could we see the Snorlax being used, but you could also see potentially chained together Luminions in the, a matchup like this where it, you're often going to be trying to make this game last a long time because it's hard for Daichi to win. Yeah, because Daichi needs to be winning, you know, lose game one. If you need to win this matchup, you need to win two games. Or Daichi's deck is not made to win quick games. It's made to grind out long games. You don't really want a best of three. You want a best of one with a lot of these control decks, but that's been taken away by losing game one. Now, we did see a lot of energy being used, free energy used to retreat that Dunspar, so that's something we've got to watch. But we do see a KO from Snorlax, who weirdly doesn't wake up. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> no, it is coming to stay asleep. And yeah, <laughs> this Snorlax is uh, such a, a pivotal card here. It's so important. Taking that big knockout, and now Daichi needs to figure out something here. And uh, a, an attacker would be nice. This Pokemon is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, quite frankly, it's pretty gosh darn terrifying. We saw last game that, it, you know, it did very, very well. But Daichi here, you kind of, you love seeing that Natalie discarded free energy to retreat the Dunsparce. And if I'm Daichi here, I'm thinking, well, hang on a second. If I can gust something up while potentially getting rid of energy with Evil's Hal here, then I can start really running Natalie out of resources. And that's really what I'm, what I'm looking for here. You know, my Gallimine is still in play. So Gusting plus Evil Tal, I think, is probably the ideal here, but that depends on what you've got. It looks like it is just a mill tank attack, which I don't think is enough to get the KO here. I yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't think we're at we're at that point yet. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and count it out here just to be sure. But yeah, the the unfazed bat on that Snorlax there, making it so that you have to take this Pokemon out by getting the uh, the just knocking it out. You can't really go for the energy cards in a situation like this. This Pokemon's going to continue to stick around. And, uh, Daichi understands that, just has to go aggressive, and thankfully this control list has that option. Yeah, the middle tank did 110 for the five bench Pokemon plus the 10 base, minus 20 for the double turbo, which is on the middle tank, which is awkward. I mean, yeah, you could have used a twin energy if you had one, but that's why we sit at 90 there, and you're right, that unfazed fat stops Evil Tau getting rid of that energy because, of course, it is an effect of an attack. Well, we'll see Daichi now starting to look at towards more of those Evil Tau as it looks like Snorlax finally will be falling soon. No recovery in the list here for the Lukia. So once you remove this Pokemon, you're probably going to be playing against a lot of Luminion. <laughs> yeah, and a second ago I said about gusting with Evil Tau, I of course meant after the Snorlax goes down yes. because of the whole unfaced fat thing being um, a little bit of a pain. But you've just look at Daichi's board, and it's literally Daichi's going, well, I think Miltank can take out Snorlax. And if you look at the board, it's just Evil Tau, Evil Tau, Evil Tau. <laughs> the energy's getting built up. And like you say, we're not using double energies there on Daichi's board. A lot of single energies while we've got time to actually do that. So now if you're Natalie, oh, we do see the boss's orders coming up. And this is what we're talking about between games where 
Potentially, Luminion can be used here to do 120, take a KO on that smaller Pokemon, but then go back to the deck so you're not losing those energies. You're not losing a two prize Pokemon. Look at this. So oh. cool. Going to go ahead and play the Aurora energy. Wary of that Sydney coming down potentially. Just wants to make sure that all of these energies stay in the deck and can't be targeted. That's the strategy when you go double fish, and it's looking pretty solid. Double fish. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it called double fish before, <laughs> but I kind of love it, and that is now definitely what I'm referring to it as. But yeah, we do see the fish coming down. And th this is exactly what we said about Luminium. You're not really playing Luminium for Aqua Return. You're playing it because it searches out your supporter, whether that might be Professor's Research to search a bunch of cards, Marnie for Disruption, Boss's Orders for Gusting, etc. But it gives you that wonderful extra utility for taking down these Pokemon. And now we see stuff like the Elhorn because Daichi needs to just fend off a couple of these attacks. We see the Scoop Up Net picking up the Snorlax. And hey, look, Miltank's back. Yeah, this is a, a really cool play as Daichi understands double fish is terrifying. So if you can go ahead and remove one of those from play, eventually something is going to be put in the active spot that Natalie does not like to see. It, the, the problem is that the fish go back into the deck. So you've got to basically one hit KO or two hit KO stopping them attacking. So we're going to come down to confusion flips. Yes. If Luminion hits heads on confusion, it will go back into the deck. So it's a risky strategy from Daiji here because it's not entirely in your control, but you don't have anything which is going to do a better job of Koen Luminion here. Yeah. We'll see if uh, there's anything else for Daiji to do here. We saw the Bruno and going for that Cape of Toughness so that Milton can stick around and uh, maybe take an additional shot from the Luminion if it does get a successful attack off this turn or yeah. next turn. We see the Suin Heavy Ball coming down, looking for those basic Pokemon that are in your prizes. And also, it just, you know, lets you have a quick look at your prizes. It's kind of nice. It is important to note, though, assuming Heavy Ball does make you shuffle your prize cards, so you don't then know where they all are. We've seen some cards in the past that will Town Map, a former world champion, um, very famously played what, Town Map in every deck Night ever. <laughs> yep, Robin. Yeah, Robin Schultz. But here, you, it is still randomized, but you know what's in your prizes. You potentially get to go and get a basic Pokemon. Like, did he even have anything to get there? I think there was a Snorlax, potentially. But yeah, it's a, it's just oh, honestly just getting the information is always good. Yeah. He also has seen a ton of his deck at this point. So probably just was able to assure something he already knew. Right, so we see the Marnie coming down from Natalie here. And this is going to be a very big turn. The attack on the Minion's easy. We've got two Archeops on the board. So there's definitely going to be enough energy. The Luminion's already in the active. Now, because of the Cape of Toughness, it won't KO the middle tank, but it doesn't is really need to KO this she turn. As long as you're going double fish and looping, you're fine. Yep. The issue here is the confusion. I'm not sure Natalie's got the resources to get out of the confusion. I think she's kind of got a flip here. And this is a very, very, very big flip. Yep, just going to go ahead and pass, oh, conceding... No. The, the Luminion over to Daichi here. There was the Ultra Ball in hand. The second fish could have been grabbed, and you could have seen the aggressive uh, combination there. Go for uh, the, the fight, go for the, the Confusion Flip, but not going to go that route this time. And the problem is these Lugia decks, and I count Natalie's amongst them, they don't really play Recovery. It's not like you're playing a bunch of Ordinary Rod or Clara or something like that to, to get these cards back. You know, when the fish hits the discard pile, that, the fish is kind of gone. So, I mean, you can still go single fish, it still works, but you've got to find it every turn, which just then becomes far more awkward, then you've got to get it in the active, and I mean, would you have gone for the flip there on the fish? It's tough, yeah. I, I think if Natalie has a, an understanding of what's left in the deck and how many energies there are to, to close out here, then maybe you just uh, you slow down at this stage. The Pumpkaboo is in hand, so maybe there's an opportunity uh, to maybe counter this Galar Mine and then start to work in enough Pokemon and not care about Cry of Destruction. We've already seen two prize cards taken. Yeah, that is a very, very interesting point here. You know, just you've already taken a couple. Just try and just take out the rest. Ignore Cry of Destruction as much as you can. Just try and kind of run through the rest of those prizes. Because there does come a point where you need so few attacks to win the game that you can just ignore the Disruption. If you attack every turn, you will get the win. And that's where you're always really aiming for against Control. That wonderful turn where it's really up to you streaming attacks rather than them slowing you down. Now, we do see the energy coming on to Archeops here, and I kind of like this because you've said yourself, you don't need two Archeops in this matchup. Yeah. 
So if Natalie attacks here, gets, well, not going to quite get the KO, but if Natalie attacks here, it doesn't really matter if she then loses the Archeops, she's got one to spare. Yeah, and it was it was cute from Daichi there. Oh, they will get the KO. You okay. saw just passing the turn the earlier, trying to get those energies onto the Luminion for a missed flip. So Natalie understands that <laughs> Daichi's just going to wait it out. It has to go for this aggressive play here, get the energies down onto the Archeops, use those powerfuls this instance, and now there's an opportunity to remove all these energies from play. You just also want to stick this along with the Galar Mine so that your opponent is using this Archeops to attack the rest of the game. And it's very easy to count energies day. from that point on. Oh, yes. And when you can get, you know, in the same way that we say that Natalie wants to get to a stage where, you know, she can just attack every turn and not worry about disruption, Daichi wants to get to a a stage where he's, he's counting energy. Just going, right, there's one less, there's another, and you're out of attack as I win the game. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, boss here would be huge. Gala mine here would be absolutely huge. We know Cry of Destruction is... Oh, no, it's not quite on yet. We will need another energy on the active evil tower. We will need one more energy to, to sort that out. But once we get one more energy, we should be all right. I was looking to see if Daichi maybe had access to a Sydney. This would be an absolutely devastating spot Ooh. as Natalie's holding two special energy cards in hand, but don't know if that strategy is going to line up just this turn. I'm not seeing one in hand, unfortunately. There is the energy. Now it is, unfortunately, a double energy to go with the single energy, but now we've got free energy, and yeah, Daichi there is going, right, how many energy have I got rid of? Of course, Daichi doesn't know Natalie's deck list, but Daichi is one of the very best players in the world. Daichi knows... The, the standard counts for Lugia. Daichi knows roughly how much energy Lugia is likely to play, and that's how Daichi's doing his counts here. Natalie's going to count it up. I don't think oh, she has no. enough energies to play the game and, and is going to scoop it up. Yeah, we're, we're tied at one game all here. And, and that is actually, weirdly enough, that is kind of a mark of how good a player Natalie is. Because to a lot of people watching, that game was could have gone on for quite a while. You know, we'd only taken a couple prize cards each, and Natalie looked and went, I know how many attacks I need, I know how much energy I've got, I know how much switching I've got, and how She's much dusting my opponent's got. I'm not going to win this. And Natalie also knows ties in a nine-round tournament aren't great. You want right. wins. So leaving 18 minutes to go on for game three, that is exactly what you're looking for here, because the chances of Daichi actually winning game three are low because of the way Daichi's deck works. So... If Natalie lets that game go on, it's probably going to be a draw as a match. If Natalie scoops, which she did, she can seize the game, it's almost certainly going to be a case of either we draw or Natalie wins. It's not that likely Daichi wins game three with 18 minutes left. That's an excellent point. As yeah, that, it, is, it is so difficult for Daichi to do just that. We know that the double fish can buy plenty of time if you need to, but there is a huge opportunity here for Natalie to use that Snorlax early on in combination with that Marnie Put Daichi on a small hand, struggling to find energies, and maybe you get enough sleep flips to where you can take all these prize cards. <laughs> Let me say, game one, there was enough sleep flips. <laughs> I've never seen any, but four out of five double heads was absolutely just silly. But I kind of love it. And I got to make a jet lag joke, so you know, all good. Now, Radiant Charizard prized again, and we see a Sydney prize for Daichi. Nothing horrendous, though. Yeah, double Thornton in the oh, prize actually, cards no, there. Pumpkaboo. So, oh, yeah, the, the Pumpkaboo there for Natalie as well. Could be interesting. The triple Galar Mine over on Daichi's side. That's something to look for. Absolutely. So we are off again. Natalie starts off with that Lugia. Daichi starts off with a mill tank. Better starters for, for both players in this game. Both of them basically having kind of what they'd like. We start off with an Ultra Ball. Oh, sorry, Quick Ball. Getting rid of that Stoutland V, which is not really your preferred attacker in this game. And it's lots of counting. How much energy have I got prize? Because as we saw in that last game, Natalie got to a stage where she didn't think she had enough energy left to finish out the game. She just conceded there and then. Yep. See Back the along big mine, going on up. here. And uh, honestly, the most important thing is looking for that Snorlax. Thankfully, it will be around at this time. And that's going to open up the window for a lot of prize cards to be taken. Also important, seeing that Lugia V in the active position, that means that you don't have to worry about that awkward Pokemon once more. We saw the Manaphy, we saw the Dunsparce. Yep. At least Lugia has to be a part of the equation. <laughs> you have to summon Star, so getting it down early doesn't hurt you at all. Yeah, that, that, you cannot play Lugia V-Star without using summoning V-Star. Like, the, the entire deck revolves around being able to use Lugia to summon out those Archeops and roll. And, oh, look, it's our big sleepy boy. Snorlax <laughs> is coming out. 
And, you know, this is one of the things I love about watching top players like Natalie and like Daiji. Natalie looked at this match and went, oh, control. Guess I'm just going Snorlax then. And you know Natalie's tested, maybe not against a specific control, but certainly against control. And she knows it's got to be a Snorlax play. As we go over to Daichi and we see a Colrus's experiment coming down, and there's decisions to be made. Yep, love the pace of play here from Daichi. Just moving those cards as quick as possible, trying to get a nice full game here. And this is the hand that can do it, starting with that Colrus experiment, along with the Radiant Greninja too. The Miltank could potentially get a little aggressive if you need to, but honestly, you're looking for that Gorman die so you can get that big setup once more. Yeah, Gorman dies to draw would be good. You could knock out 30 damage Ooh. with twin energy. <laughs> what have we seen? We see the Echoing Horn in Ooh. the hand, and there's a Stellan V in the discard pile. Oh, that would be very annoying, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that could be pretty frustrating. We'll see if that ever uh, comes down here early on. Yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily want to tempt your opponent into maybe going four powerful colorless energy <laughs> giant Stoutland. But they really aren't that, you know, Manaphy's maybe like the best option to try and go after with Stoutland for Natalie. And so I, I think Daiji here is as fun as that might be. I, I think, yeah, Echoing Horn, I'd like to see it. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see if it's uh, a point that Daiji's worried about as Honestly, you want to see the most cards you can right now here with the Gorman dies. So, yeah, it's going to be played. Yes. Here comes the Stoutland V, whether you like it or not. And then we see a retreat on the mill tank using that double turbo energy. Evil Tau wow. hits the bench, and we see a Gallimine. I mean, if, if you were looking for a good turn for Daichi, you were happy then. That was a phenomenal turn, but you've got 14 minutes to win a game as a control player. That is not an easy thing to accomplish. We have got a nice pace of play from both players here, because although Natalie is very unlikely to lose the game, she doesn't want to not lose. She wants to win. So we're going to see, hopefully, a Lugia V Star coming out here. And we've got an Evolution Incense, so it's definitely coming out here. And then we're hopefully going to see just a few attacks. And for Natalie, it's just going to be poking away with Snorlax, trying to take these prizes kind of as fast as you can. Yep, once more, we see that Archaeops along with the Ultra Ball. So we're going to go ahead and grab that Lugia V Star now. Double Archaeops in the discard pile and can go ahead and grab both of those Pokemon, have all the energy acceleration necessary for this match. And it's probably going to have to be one of those aggressive ones where you just lean on the, the Lugia and hope that your opponent didn't find enough cards right here. Maybe you <laughs> find that Marnie to follow up on the next turn. Yeah, that would be nice. So we do have enough energy on the Lugia here. Yes, we do. So we've got the double turbo energy. So can get the KO. I mean, we, we've seen in the previous two games, Natalie has not been prioritizing Lugia as an attacker because it, you know, confusion hurts, because it's not got that protection that Snorlax has, because it, you know, takes a lot of energy, etc. But basically at this stage, you get the KO. And actually, although it's not the main reason to play Tempest Dive, it does KO a, a discard a stadium in play. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's almost a bait from Daichi. Just says, well, I really hope that you're attacking with Lugia as opposed to Snorlax. Let's go ahead and get that Lugia rolling here. We'll get rid of a, a, a mine. That's fine. Oh. And here comes some pressure. The Stoutland V potentially stuck in the active. Energies to be falling here from the Evital. Yeah, it's got a retreat cost of V a retreat cost of free naturally. You did not want it on the field. That's one of the reasons why the Echoing Horn was such a good play from Daichi. And being able to gust it up while also getting rid of the energy on Lugia was just a great play. And, I mean, if anything, the retreat cost alone was worth using the Echoing Horn for. For sure. We've already seen two powerful energies played as well. One to the discard pile, one to the Snorlax. So don't expect to see the double diff fangs getting any work done early on here. It's going to have to be a little slower. The triple capture energy to the Stoutland V is going to be the choice. And it seems like Natalie's play here is just, I'm going to attack with whatever I can to take whatever prizes I can. I don't have much time remaining. Oh, Stoutland's in the active. Fine, I'll whack a bunch of energy on Stoutland and then see if I can get a KO with, with Stoutland, because why not? We get the four energy on. Wild Tackle will do 200. Will KO the Evil Tower 30 to itself. And essentially here, Natalie's playing a dangerous game. And I, I think it's fair to say, Natalie would not be doing this if this was game one Ooh. and we still had 50 minutes on the clock. So Daichi here has got a real opportunity to get a couple more Evil Tau, really go after that energy aggressively. And if Daichi can get that working, I think he, he's going to frustrate Natalie and kind of ruin Natalie's plan. But Natalie is playing like all good players do in game three. It's kind of desperation mode. 
it is, I'm going to attack with what I can and cross my fingers this is going to work. Absolutely, and there is always a pivotal point in this game where if you can't find the Cry of Destruction, then you have to switch up the strategy here. And we'll see if Daichi has something to do, potentially uh, a, a yell horn or anything to slow down the Stoutland. But it might just be a situation where you lose a prize card, as we've already seen the energy attachment onto that Snorlax. Yeah, we would need some kind of switching option, a pivot to get that mill tank out of the active. Of course, that Stoutland with a big retreat cost of three and the big attack cost of four is a great candidate to be Yellhorned. But I've not seen the Yellhorn from Daichi at the moment. And it's a great card if you can find it. But if it's not coming out here, then that Stoutland will get a KO every turn moving forward. Like, e even that Cape of Toughness isn't really saving anything at this stage. Stoutland's doing 200. Yeah, and we're going to see uh, the cards played down here. Daichi is holding on to a, a couple copies of the Cry of Destruction Evitol, and it's, it's only going to play down the one, of course. We'll see the aggression oh, immediately targeting that Pokemon, though. Sensing weakness and trying to remove this so that the energies can stick around. Yeah, I love that. Getting rid of the only evil tower. You're taking a prize anyway, but it's always nice to be able to get the best prize possible. Natalie has taken three prizes. And we're not quite halfway through the time we had when this game started. Natalie is on pace to take the sixth prizes and win this game. It is not her optimal game plan. It's not what she really wanted to do going into this game. But right now, it's working. Snorlax is a great option in this matchup. Stoutland, no. Very good. Natalie didn't even want the Stoutland. She discarded it. Yeah. Daichi brought it back with the Echoing Horn. And Natalie's like, right, well, if you're going to bring it back and gust it in the active, I suppose I'll use it and... Well, Daichi's not found the answer so far, and it's, it's almost like he's done Natalie a favor. Ooh, okay, so it looks like the second double energy was found. So maybe there's a combination here with Thornton where you could work in the Radiant Greninja and then move this Pokemon out, get the double Evitol going, and then you can focus on double Cry of Destruction because you don't really want to do one unless you know you have a second one as a follow-up. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, 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 getting rid of energy is nice, but if you get rid of a few energy and then your opponent gets it back and gets a couple of KOs, that's not doing it. So I agree with you there. You want to be getting a couple of these in a row, really getting rid of your opponent's options. And we've got double energy. In fact, we've got two double energy in hand. And yep. we do, yeah, so there is, well, as long as there is a pivot option, we know we can cry destruction next turn. And honestly, I mean, would you bench the evil Sal here? Because Natalie's not going to KO both of them in one turn. Of course, I'm thinking of the, the Thornton. I think they're all in the prize card. So Bird Keeper, at least, being able to continue everything here, looking <laughs> strong. But yeah, we see the energy count. I think we're up to seven now in the discard pile for Natalie. And uh, Daichi's going to continue to to chase every single energy with three prize cards remaining. I believe that Natalie might have enough cards to close this out. But Snorlax is probably going to have to make its way to the active sometime soon. Yeah, or we see the Luminion coming down. That's a way to essentially put energy down, get a KO, put that energy straight back into the deck. We do have Bird Keeper here that's just come out as a pivoting option. So we can get Snorlax or Luminion in the active, and it really has to be one of them. Like, Stoutland was fun. Stoutland was never going to work long term. Not, not against Cry Destruction. It's way too vulnerable. So we do see Natalie making the decision here. The energy has gone on to the Luminium. And we're going to see an Aqua return for KO on the Evil Town. Yeah, this is perfect. You get to preserve those energies and then move that Stoutland out of the active spot and potentially just bring up that Snorlax and uh, you'll have a, a nice wall there that can also work as an attacking option. Yeah, that's not bad at all. We see another energy coming down here. And it's an, it's an extra energy, but you made the point earlier in the game. You don't want the energies in your hand because they're vulnerable to Sydney. So attaching them to the Dominion means you get to shuffle them back into your deck where Archeops can get them super easily anyway. And it's just, it's a very small play, but it's the kind of thing where some players go, oh, I lost because they hit my last energy with Sydney. And some players like Natalie go, oh yeah, no, we couldn't hit any energy. I shuffled it back with Luminion. Yep. Well, we've seen a lot of Cry of Destruction Evitol fall on the, the side of Daichi. Going to work through, looking through all of the resources here, just under seven minutes left to close this game out. And you have to think that's going to be an uphill climb here with six prize cards to go. Yeah, I mean, Daichi here is unfortunately, it, it's, <laughs> it's the wrong kind of deck. As soon as you lose a quick game one with these control decks, you know you're in a little bit of trouble because you, you have made a deck which is specifically built to win a sl long, slow game one. And then maybe you win game two, maybe it doesn't finish. Either way, it doesn't matter, you win the match. It is not built to come from an 0-1 deficit in the match. And then you find yourself against a player like Natalie, 
who's not even going to let you have the tie here. And, you know, I can't stress enough, Natalie conceding with 18 minutes left was a phenomenal play because it gave her a chance to win, but not really Daichi. But we do see a boss's orders coming up here, getting the Stoutland in the active. And now the question is, does Natalie have either a pivot option or enough energy to just attack with Stoutland? Yeah, and when you have only two prize cards remaining, I think there's just enough energies in general for Stoutland to get Four, the job five. done here. And a Six, double seven, as well. Eight, There's yes. so many. There's definitely enough energy. So Natalie doesn't need to worry here. She can just take the care with Stoutland. And then next turn, I think she can even just use Lugia or Snorlax. So I do think at this stage, Natalie has got this. There's time enough. And it seems like there's energy enough. And it was a risky, it was a risky strategy. It was a fast strategy. But it does look like it's going to pay off for Natalie here. Yep, this looks pretty great. You're going to have the energies to uh, use the Stoutland V and have the Snorlax as the follow-up option to potentially close out here. Uh, enough energies to retreat any Pokemon to, and you go ahead and use that Snorlax. It's not at risk of being KO'd here in this situation. No, that is absolutely lovely. I mean, you could have attacked with the with the Stoutland there and just kept the Snorlax for next turn. I'm slightly worried about a boss's orders coming down on the Stoutland. But then you've got enough energy anyway. So it doesn't really matter how you do it. Either way, Natalie's got the resources. There's a few different ways. It all works out the same. So we do see a heads and a tails. Snorlax is a sleepy boy and does go to sleep. Yep. If there were a, a, a Thornton play, maybe we could see this Snorlax uh, with unfazed fat. Use something Snore against this Snorlax and take a knockout. But just not having the resources here is Daichi. And it's going to continue to try to look for some more cards here with the Radiant Greninja. I don't know what the answer is, though. No, I honestly don't, because the problem is anything, you know, I, I mean, I suppose you bring up an Archeops, but even then you've got enough energy to retreat and the Snorlax can attack. So, no, I'm looking for ways here, but Natalie's got enough energy remaining. She can retreat anything. She can attack with anything. And I, I do think at this stage that Daichi is kind of unfortunately between a rock and a hard place. We'll see the scoop up net on the Radiant Greninja. Maybe drawing even more here, looking for any way to, to do some disruption. Yellhorn, anything. I don't know what you can do at this stage, but find something to try to slow down your opponent. Looks like Eldegoss is found. Yeah, has he played a supporter for the turn yet? I don't believe so, and we do see the Galar mind. Uh, but I, what, what sport did you even want here? Like... I mean, really, the, the problem is the energy, and the energy can be gotten out of the deck with Archeops. And that's really what you're trying to stop your opponent having access to. So I'm not even sure something like Amani here would be great. And like I say, you can go and get a boss's orders, but Natalie Sorry. should have enough energy to just retreat whatever kind it is. <laughs> um, I mean, a Raiding Greninja can take a hit from Archeops if there's no powerful colorless energy, but it doesn't get you any closer to actually winning the game. And I, I do think we are in a little bit of trouble here if we're Daichi. We'll see if, uh, yeah, it looks like boss's orders could be grabbed here. Go after a yeah. V Pokemon, and with the high hit points and the Galar Mind, maybe five is just too many energies to expect as a retreat. You don't have to worry about being KO'd as the Miltink has uh, that body on it, so uh, avoid being KO'd by the V. Yeah, she saved that, the last vacuum. The only thing we got here, we do see a very quick, quick pull here from Natalie, though. She knows what's going on. And it looks like she's eyeing up that Luminion, counting up the energy. And yeah, I mean, when you play this, you've got it. We see the boss's orders on the Snorlax. We see the energy on the Stoutland. We see the KO on the Snorlax. And we see a 2-1 victory for Natalie. <laughs> that was something else. So it's such an aggressive strategy against the control player. And Natalie is going to find a way to make it to 3-0 here. Uh, really on the back of that Snorlax and some fantastic play. Yeah, and, and it, there was just so much good play there from Natalie. Having the Snorlax in the deck in the first place, absolutely huge. Prioritizing the Snorlax in game one, absolutely huge. Choosing to concede with 18 minutes left in game two, when she wasn't out the game, but she kind of figured she didn't have enough outs, was huge. And it was little things like being willing to attack with the Stoutland after it had been echoing Horn and Boss's orders up in, in game three, which is not your usual strategy but just basically going, I need prizes now. And it actually worked. Daichi had a slower start with a Cry of Destruction in game three. And there were a couple of turns where Natalie got a couple cheeky KOs.